Okay, so let's go over what, just briefly, what we were trying to accomplish between yesterday and today. Um, what is a rational function? So hopefully you realized from yesterday that a rational function is a function that's got a polynomial on top of another polynomial. Uh, how to graph a rational function? We, we covered that whatever that top of that function is, you want to have that in parentheses when you put it in your calculator, and the entire bottom in parentheses. And finding vertical asymptotes, you look at what makes the denominator turn to zero. And that will be, in this, in this made-up quick case, x equals negative 4. Finding horizontal asymptotes went off of whether it was top-heavy, bottom-heavy, or balanced. Since this one is balanced, the exponents are both 1. You peel the numbers off the front. y equals 1 would be the horizontal asymptote. The domain, the domain exists where the asymptotes are, excuse me, the domain exists where they aren't. So the domain is all numbers except x equals negative 4. And what we're going to focus on on these remaining ones today are these last three or four things on, on the next slides. Okay, so what has changed here yesterday? We looked at what it meant for a function to be bottom heavy and how that related to horizontal asymptotes. And you probably also saw the balance situation. And the fact that top heavy meant there weren't any horizontal asymptotes is important today because that means that there are such things as called slant asymptotes. And so there are no horizontals, but there is a slant asymptote. And all a slant asymptote is, is it's just a line that the graph gets closer to at some sort of angle. So it's a slant, a slanted line. Okay, so what we want to do here is be able to find the x-intercepts, or the zeros of rational functions. And this is the same as it has been for every single function we've ever studied. To find the x-intercepts, or the zeros of a rational function, we will let the y be zero, which this is just a fancy way of saying y. So this entire side is zero. And then we must figure out a way to solve this. Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is get it to not be a fraction. And the way you get it to not be a fraction is multiply on both sides by the current denominator. These will cancel, and as we know, 0 times anything still remains 0. So if you really catch on to what we did there, is it set the top of a rational function equal to 0, and you will find the zeros. And just finishing this out, we will subtract 4. So x equaling negative 4. Um, we have to think of zeros as a point, though. It's an x-intercept. It's a point. So negative 4 is the x, and we let 0 be the y. So the point negative 4 comma 0 is the 0 of this rational function. We don't want to technically leave it as this because that's a line and zeros are points. Okay, to find the y-intercept of a rational function, um, let's just write one out here. Uh, let's say f of x equals uh, 2x plus 4 over x minus 7. Um, we do what we've always done to find y-intercepts. You let x be 0. And if you let x be 0, and remember this is just a fancy way of saying y, so f of x is y. Um, if you let x be 0, you get 2 times 0 plus 4 over 0 minus 7. So that is uh, 2 times 0 is 0 plus 4 over negative 7. So that is 4 over negative 7 and that is the y. So of the ordered pair, we let x be 0, and we got an answer for y that is negative 4 sevenths. That is the y-intercept. So it's just like every other function we've ever looked at. You let x be 0 and figure out what the y would result would be. Okay, so now we're going to make an attempt to figure out how we find the equation of a slanted asymptote. So we know that there is such a thing that might have a, a line that the graph will get closer to, and that line's kind of on a slant. We're going to try and find the equation of that line that's slanted. So the way you do that is you first recognize that it is a condition where slanted asymptotes exist, 
and that is when it is top heavy. So when this exponent up here is larger than the one down here, it is called top heavy. And what you want to do is use long division to find the equation of that slant asymptote. So we're going to set it up that x plus 1 is out here. x squared minus, uh, excuse me, plus 2x minus 6 is in here. What do you take times x to get x squared? x. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is 1x. And change the signs. Add down. Bring your next term down. What do you take times x to get 1x? A positive 1. 1 times x is 1x. 1 times 1 is 1. Change the signs and add down. Negative 7 is our remainder, and for this process, we don't care about the remainder. The equation of the slanted line that goes through the graph that the graph gets closer to is your result up at the top. So y equals x plus 1 is your slanted asymptote. If you put that in your calculator along with this original, you can actually see the graph of this function get closer to y equals x plus 1. Okay? Okay, so let's put this all together in one problem here and kind of give a comprehensive overview of, of everything you should know about rational functions. Let's start by answering the question uh, vertical asymptotes. I'll just abbreviate that VA for now. Vertical asymptotes are found by letting the denominator equal 0 and figuring out what causes that. In other words, solve that equation. So a vertical asymptote is going to show up on the, on the location of x equals 2. Uh, horizontal asymptotes, we look at the lead term and realize this is top-heavy. And a top-heavy, there is no horizontal asymptote for because it's turned into a slant asymptote. So slant asymptotes, we will long divide what times x gives x squared, that would be x, x times x is x squared, x times a negative 2 is a negative 2x, change the signs, and add down, and we get 6x minus 6, what times x gives you 6x? A positive 6. Positive 6 times x is 6x. Positive 6 times a negative 2 is negative 12. Change the signs and add down. Get a remainder of 6. We don't care about the remainder. There is a slant asymptote at the equation y equals x plus 6. What's the domain? Well, the domain is related. The domain is related to the vertical asymptotes. So, if I know there's a vertical asymptote at x equals two, the domain is all numbers, all real numbers, I guess, except x equals two. Or, as you've seen noted on the key that I've made, I might have said such that x is not two. Okay. So any way you choose to word that, but all real numbers except x being 2, okay? And the only things to remain are the x and y intercepts. So let me move this stuff out of the way here. And let's find the x-intercept. We do that by let, letting y equal 0. 0 equals... And then multiply both sides by x minus 2 gets rid of the fact that you have fractions. Anything times 0 is still 0, so ultimately you are just finding the answer to this top. Set equal to 0, okay? Uh, let's see, 6's factors are 6 and 1. Uh-oh, I've made one that doesn't factor. We would take this to the quadratic formula if we really wanted to know. I should have made this a 5, so it would uh, factor. Uh, I won't do that here, but uh, I think all of the ones, all of the y-intercepts that I have you factor, factor into two nice things. So, sorry about this made-up problem that's not very good. Let's just uh, sidebar that. Okay, we can talk about that tomorrow if, you need, if you're having trouble with x-intercepts. Uh, y-intercepts, which are really incredibly easy. 
the y-intercept is uh, letting x be 0. And then just seeing what's left. So uh, this problem really says y 0 squared plus 4 times 0 minus 6 over 0 minus 2. Well, that's nothing, that's nothing, that's nothing. So really I have y equals negative 6 over negative 2. So therefore y is equal to 3. And I let x be 0 and I got y to be 3, so the y-intercept is at 0, 3. Kind of a comprehensive view uh, outside of x-intercepts, which I made up a problem where 6 doesn't factor. That's my fault. Uh, you could still use the quadratic formula, but that's not the point of today. And uh, that's, that's a comprehensive view of everything you'd ever want to know about rational functions.